So pre-arrival wine is when you purchase a wine and it's not going to come into the store for a number of months. And often you do it that way because you think you're going to get a better price if you pay money up front and early for that wine. Uh, so John Fox was very famous for offering pre-arrival wine at a very, very good price. So here are these customers who they know their wine is going to take a little bit of time to get here and then Fox offers to store it for them. And so as a customer you figure, well, it's going to be a couple years you're already okay with that. What's six more months? I'm not paying for the storage. It's appreciating uh, in value and, and likely taste and whatever else. Um, so it's kind of a win-win from the customer's perspective. Um, all the while, that's kind of giving Fox his window of opportunity to perpetrate his scheme. In practice, that happened a fair amount. Uh, he did source and buy a lot of wine, but he didn't buy all of the wine that he said he had. And in fact, he hadn't actually bought a lot of the wine that he was selling. And in many cases, he had no possible way of getting the wine that he was selling. Most of the money he was actually using to go buy wine to pay off the prior people, just like in a Ponzi scheme. Um, so, you know, there was, uh, you know, millions of dollars that were not, you know, personal gain to Fox, but were just used to, to continue his cycle of, uh, you know, it's, it's expensive when you're selling wine for $100 a bottle, you take the money, and you don't actually buy the bottle that customer bought, you have to satisfy an old order. And now that old order, instead of being $100, is 120 Well, now you're already down 20%. Um, so it's an expensive fraud to perpetrate, especially when you couple that with he's taken his kind of cut on the side um, and you know spending it on, on his extravagance. He would actually deliver bottles of wine. Some of them was, were because he'd actually bought them, but some of them it was because he was going out and using the money that later uh, customers had paid for later wine to then at that moment buy wine that he owed to earlier customers. And you as a customer might have 40 bottles outstanding uh, that Premier Crew owed, owed, owed you and you complain enough and he would go and buy 10 of them at some really expensive price and losing money on those bottles and say, I got you these 10 bottles and we're going to get the next 30 at some point. Eventually, any Ponzi scheme uh, is going to collapse under its own weight because you can't keep going. Uh, you need to keep increasing the number of people you have, the number of victims you have putting your money in, and you add into the fact that he was taking a significant reputational hit as victims were coming forward and saying, I'm not, this has been a long time and this is really beyond the pale. Um, I think it probably became harder for him to continue to run it. Um, and eventually it collapsed. An all-new American Greed, Mondays, 10 Eastern, CNBC. Get yours. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.